Hey everyone, welcome to Cuatro Centavos and welcome to Santo Domingo on this rainy and gloomy day. For those of you that do not know, Cuatro Centavos is a personal finance YouTube channel catered and dedicated towards Americans who are living abroad. In today's video, I wanted to make and create a step-by-step -step process on what the process is, step-by-step -step process on what the process is to acquire Dominican citizenship if you are the son or daughter of parents that come from the Dominican Republic. Back in July of 2017, I began my process to become a Dominican citizen through my mom. And I remember when I was going through the process, it was just so complicated and there were so little resources available to me on where to even begin or what the steps are and what happens after you finish one step. So hopefully, if you find this video and if you find um, if you find me, then this video will serve some use to you in your process and could help inform what your next steps are. If you find this video useful or if you learn anything in this video, please, please, please be sure to subscribe. Please, please, please be sure to like. It just helps other people find the video when they too probably have similar questions to the ones. I had when I was starting the process or the questions that you had when you're going through you, your process. So just please make sure to subscribe and like. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm super active and I make sure to address every single question. In the description, you'll find a slew of different links. So links to different lawyer recommendations, links to different resources that I use, links to different articles. Um, that might be helpful to you. So just feel free to check down, down in the description. And in addition to that, I've also made sure to include chapters or, you know, timestamps within the video. So if there's a particular question that you're interested in getting answers to, you could just feel free to like click on that timestamp and jump to the part of the video that is most useful to you. In the Dominican Republic, like in most countries, um, there are two main paths to acquiring citizenships. The first path is obviously the most common path that most people go through, and that is through the process of what's called naturalization. This process basically entails getting residency, living in the country, in this case in the Dominican Republic for a certain amount of time, and then becoming eligible to convert your permanent residency into full citizenship. So that is one way that you could get Dominican citizenship. The second way you can get Dominican citizenship is through descent or through your parents. So this path is targeted to people who are the children of Dominican citizens. So they're the children of Dominican parents, meaning if you are the son or the daughter of somebody who has Dominican citizenship, whether it's your whether it's your mom or your dad, it does not matter. It does not have to be both. It could be one or the other. You are able to acquire Dominican citizenship completely skipping the residency process. What does that mean? That means that you can become a citizen of another country, in this case, the Dominican Republic, um, without ever having lived in the country. So for me, I currently live in the Dominican Republic. I currently lived in Santo Domingo, but when I was going through my process, I was still living back in the States. I was in college in Wisconsin, and then from there I moved to New York. So I never lived in the country, but I was able to get Dominican citizenship because my, my mom was from the Dominican Republic. Super cool because Basically, what that means is that one day you can choose to apply to become a Dominican citizen and the next day or whenever the process is done, um, you can begin living and working in the Dominican Republic as any other citizen, as if you were from Santiago de los Caballeros. In terms of who's eligible for citizenship, um, basically there's two options. It's either you have permanent residency or you are the son or the daughter of a Dominican national. That's pretty much all you need to be eligible. Alert, alert, alert. If you do not have ties to the, to the Dominican Republic, then this video may not be that useful and you may want to do some research on the process to naturalize as a Dominican citizen or acquire permanent residency um, if, if you fall in that, in that category. Before jumping in, I think it's worth mentioning that before you even begin considering this process. One important question that you need to ask yourself and one important question that I ask myself um, is why you are choosing to get Dominican citizenship and what does citizenship mean to you specifically. Based on your motive and based on your reasoning for getting citizenship and based on how you interpret citizenship, 
the answer to that question is going to inform so much on your process. It's going to inform how much does this process cost? It's going to inform how long does this process take? Um, and it's going to inform how much you're going to have to deal with because this is not like getting a driver's license from the DMV girl. Like this is getting a citizenship to an entirely different country. Does, does that make sense? So it's not going to be a walk in the park and the sooner that you know, okay, this is my end goal, this is what I'm striving for, the better off you'll be just to prepare for how long it's going to take and how much it's going to cost. So for example, there are a lot of Dominicans from New York, I'm from New York, that are that are or were interested in acquiring citizenship for the Dominican Republic because their parents have investments on the island. And legally, according to Dominican law, if anything happens to those investments, and when I say investments, I'm talking about either money in a bank account, literally retirement funding, um, or even real estate. Like if your parents own a home in, in the Dominican Republic, um, legally, as the child of those parents, you are entitled to inherit that if something were to happen to your parents. For the Dominican government to transfer those investments over to you, they need proof that you are the son or the daughter of the Dominican national that purchased that house, if we're going with the real estate example. Um, so some people may acquire citizenship with that goal and with that intention, which is to prove that I am the son or the daughter of this person who purchased a home that I'm trying to claim as mine in this present moment. If this is your motive for citizenship, all you really need is a birth certificate from the Dominican Republic, which you get very early on in your naturalization phase that says your name and says your parents name and you are good to go to take your house and run into the sunset if that's what you want to do if your motive is to live work study or just operate in the dominican republic as a member of society in the dominican republic you will need what's called a dominican cellula which is the key document used here on the island for literally everything and it is not something you get early on in the process of becoming a Dominican citizen. So if you fall into this bucket, it's worth keeping in mind that your process may be a bit longer and may be a bit more expensive um, than somebody who's just out here trying to get um, a naturalization certificate or just like a simple birth certificate, which happens pretty early on. I share these examples just to emphasize that depending on what your motive for citizenship um, depending on what that motive is will sort of tell you how long this process is how much this process will cost um and what you get at the end of this process you want to sort of take the time again just to reflect internally before starting this process to align on what your goals are and what you are interpreting as citizenship um, before you get started so you know where your process starts and where your process will end at the end of this so with all that being said, what are you going to need? First thing that you're going to need is your passport from your original country of origin or your country of birth. So in my case, I was born in Puerto Rico. My country of origin is the United States. Um, so I had to present my US passport. But if you are from Canada, the UK, Spain, Italy, China, the process is the same. You're just going to need um, your passport from your home country, as well as two photocopies of sort of the information sheet on your passport. You're also going to need your original birth certificate. So this is your original birth certificate, the one that you got when you were born. Um, and you're also going to need two photocopies of that, of that before you start the process. Following that, you're going to need a certified translation of your birth certificate. If, it, if, 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 if. It is not already in Spanish. This is the Dominican Republic. Hopefully you know this if you're watching this video, but the official language of the Dominican Republic is Spanish, meaning that for all intents and purposes and for all documents that you're gonna be presenting on behalf or to the Dominican government, they have to be in Spanish. So your birth certificate, if you're born in a country that doesn't speak Spanish, will have to get translated legally. It's not enough sort of to like open a Google doc, you know, start, you know, copy and pasting in, in Google Translate and pasting it and printing that page out. It has to be certified translation. And if you have questions on where you can get those certified translations, just feel free to Google them. There's a whole bunch of professional translators that do this for a living. 
Um, but I think the easiest way to do this um, is just to go through a Dominican consulate or embassy. Most, if not all, Dominican consulates and embassies offer translation services as one of their services. So if you need any sort of documents translated, that's probably the easiest, quickest, and cheapest way to get it done. The next thing you will need is an apostille, which I did not know. I did not know what this was when I was first going through this process and when I was first starting the process. But basically, this is a certificate that authenticates the signature of a public um, official on a document for use in another country. I read that from Wikipedia. Uh, basically, what this means. An apostille is a process that's done by a legal professional. It could be a lawyer, it could be an attorney, but basically what it does is that it authenticates the document as legitimate for international use. So for example, if you have a birth certificate from Kansas, because you were born in Kansas, or you have a birth certificate from Florida, Miami, you were born in Miami, um, that birth, for that birth certificate to be recognized internationally because it was issued by the state of Florida, for example, um, it has to get an apostille. So you're going to have to get an apostille for that birth certificate to be able to use it in the Dominican context. And if you need a recommendation on where to get an apostille, again, another key thing that you're going to need is a Dominican parent. Obviously, they are the ones that are going to be helping you get Dominican citizenship they are one of the most important steps in this process, so you're going to need a Dominican parent. What is considered a Dominican parent, which I know is a question that many people will have. A Dominican parent is either somebody who was born in the Dominican Republic or that they themselves are the descendant of Dominicans. So for example, if your mom was born in New York, but your grandmother was born in the DR, your mom is still Dominican. The only thing is that you're gonna have to go through this process two times. You're gonna have to go through it once for your mom, and then you're gonna have to go it a second time for yourself. But Dominican citizenship is passed through descendants. It's not passed based on place of birth. Ideally, your parents are already naturalized citizens, either because they were born here, they grew up here, um, or because they were all stars and they decided to go through this process themselves when they were young. Um, so you don't have to go through this twice, but. If you are a few generations disconnected from the Dominican Republic, just know that there may be some more heavy lifting and some duplication of these processes that you may have to go through um, to achieve your final result. And I'll say for the sake of ease, if both of your parents are Dominican, I would suggest choosing one to avoid having to do the things that I list out in this video at continuation two times. And the way I would go about selecting which one of your two parents to choose comes down to which one of your two parents will be easier to work with and engage with throughout this process. Either because they are more organized with their documents, so they've been more on top of ensuring that all of their documents from the Dominican Republic, even though they live abroad, are up to date and they're up to code and that they're not shredded and in pieces so you don't have to go digging around. Or it could simply be somebody who you're just more comfortable working with. So for example, in my case, both of my parents are Dominican, but because my parents divorced when I was young, I felt most comfortable going through the route of getting citizenship through my mom than my dad, so I chose to go through my mom. Through my mom. Um, again, you only need one parent, one Dominican parent, to be eligible for Dominican citizenship. So save yourself the time, save yourself the trouble, save yourself the hassle, and just pick one from the start so you're not having to like do everything twice because you have to do it for your mom and for your dad. Another decision-making input to consider when choosing your parents is to, again, refer back to the previous question that we asked ourselves, which is, why are you getting Dominican citizenship? If your motive for acquiring Dominican citizenship is to proof, is to have proof of a legal connection to one of your parents, either because they have investments out here on the island or because they have a house here on the Dominican Republic that you want to inherit, then girl, you know which parent you need to go with. You need to go with the parents that you're trying to prove a connection with just because it's gonna make your life significantly, significantly easier. Once you've aligned on, okay, which parent, which one of your two Dominican parents you wanna choose to begin this process, there's a couple of things you're gonna need from them. First thing you're gonna need from them is their most recent Dominican birth certificate. It's worth noting that up until recently, Dominican birth certificates used to expire. How can a birth certificate expire? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but just want to flag 
that birth certificate of your parents, if they were issued prior to 2021, then they may need to have their birth certificate reissued or renewed before it could be used in sort of this governmental process. If you need to renew a birth certificate, um, it's pretty easy to do this, so it's not that big of a hassle. Um, you can do this at your corresponding Dominican consulate or your corresponding Dominican embassy. Um, again, see the link in the description or see the links in the description to like track where your closest one is. Or if you are in the Dominican Republic, you can go to any Junta Central Electoral, um, which is basically the national registry um, to get your um, birth certificate reissued or renewed. The other thing that you're going to need from your parent is also their most recent Dominican cédula. Again, if it is expires, there is the sub step of getting the cédula renewed, which is super easy to do. Again, you could do that at your consulate. You could do it at your local Junta Central Electoral. Just keep in mind that you're also going to need their cédula and the birth certificate, their birth certificate. And for both of those things, you want to bring two photocopies of their birth certificate as well as two photocopies of their cédula. The final thing that you are going to need is money. Money, 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 money. This is a personal finance channel and obviously this process is not free, entirely free. There might be certain pieces that, that are free. Um, so that brings us and transitions us nicely to the next section. How much does this process cost? Like I mentioned earlier on in the video, and back to that first question that you need to ask yourself, which is, what are my, what are the goals? What, what is my reasoning for acquiring citizenship, and what do I consider as citizenship? Because the cost will vary based on ultimately what your idea of citizenship is, right? The price of somebody who's willing, who only needs a birth certificate, is not going to be the same as the price of someone who needs a passport. To give you an idea of how much prices can go, I, I've i broken it down into sort of three main buckets. There's sort of the pre-cost to like prepare for the process. There's the cost that you're spending during the process itself. And then there are some additional add-ons. So pre-cost, which again are costs prior to starting the process to gather everything that you need. Um, in total, pre-cost can add up to $500. But that's assuming that in photocopies, again, you're gonna have to take photocopies of every single document. Um, that we chat through in this video, um, budget around $10 for photocopies. The second big cost is going to be getting your own documents, not your parents, ignore your parents, but your own documents, which is your passport, your birth certificate. Um, I would say budget around $200. Um, again, this is assuming you don't have a birth certificate and assuming you don't have a passport. If you already have those two things, then you can save yourself some money, but I'm Assuming that if you're watching this video, you are starting from zero, you do not have a passport, you do not have a birth certificate, and you're gonna have to go and get those things. So budget around $200 for a birth certificate. Renewing, renewing your parents' Dominican cedula and birth certificate, I would budget around $100 to get both of those things in order before starting the process. And a postal, again, it varies based on where you get your postal from. I paid around $50 for mine, but prices ranges between $50 to $75. Translation of your birth certificate. Translation of your birth certificate. Again, I didn't need to pay for this because I was born in Puerto Rico. My birth certificate was already in Spanish. But if your birth certificate is not in Spanish, you have to get it translated officially. And so I would budget around $50 for that translation. And then I would also just add a buffer. So for those of you that have seen my budget video, which you can see after this video, um, I, it's always important to have a buffer just because things might be more expensive than you anticipate. So I would buffer around $75. So all in all, for pre-cost, I would say $500 is a good ballpark of what you can expect to pay prior to starting the process. If you're starting from absolutely zero, again, if you have your birth certificate or your parents um cedula is not expired and you already have your passport obviously it's going to be significantly cheaper but if you're starting from ground zero um then it is going to be a bit more pricey so the maximum that you should spend at this stage is 500 dollars. cost during the process so this is once you've gathered everything and once you started submitting documents um going through the process i say will average at around a maximum of 400 dollars, and that's again at each key stage, you're going to have to be paying some sort of fee to the Dominican government to acquire the different sort of 
documents that you're gonna need throughout the process. So we'll get into this later on in the video, but sort of the first stage that you're gonna have to be paying for is called the transcription, which is basically when your, when your parents' citizenship is transcribed to grant you citizenship. And according to the government website, this service costs about 100 US dollars, getting your birth certificate. So once your citizenship is transcribed, the first piece of document that you're going to be getting, or one of the first pieces of document that you'll be getting is a birth certificate. And you're gonna be paying $25 for that birth certificate. Cedula is gonna be zero dollars. Cedulas are, or cellulas are free and they're covered by the state. Passport, again, passports here are pretty expensive. They cost $200 to get issued. Um, if you're located outside of the country, if you're located in the country, it's a bit cheaper. Um, but I'm assuming if you are looking to get citizenship through your parents, it's likely because you don't live in the Dominican Republic. So you're going to have to pay the fee that Dominicans abroad have to pay. And then again, a buffer of $75, just in case, you know, prices fluctuate, it could go up, it could go down. But all in all, I think $75 buffer is, is the best bet. I say in general, the cost during the process is less flexible um, since you will have to pay certain items at key stages of the process. But again, depending on what your motive for citizenship is, will shape the price. So for example, the price of transcription is not going to change, right? That's set to $100 for everybody undergoing this process. The price to get your birth certificate is set to about $25 for everybody undergoing the process. But what can fluctuate is what you yourself consider as citizenship. So if your goal is to get a passport, then honey, you're gonna be paying the full $400. But if your goal is only to get um, through transcription, right, you don't even need a birth certificate, then you're only spending $100. So you wanna ask yourself that question first and that will sort of inform the price. But I'm assuming you're going through this entire process. If you're going through the entire process, the cost during is gonna be about $400. With add-ons, um, I think the only thing that you could really add on in addition to this is to hire a lawyer to take your case, which this is what I did. I did contract a lawyer to, to take my case on and on average lawyer fees for this sort of service ranges between $2,000 and $3,000. Hiring a lawyer is by no means a requirement, but it is a benefit, which again, serves as a nice transition to, to the next section. Should you hire a lawyer? Yes, absolutely hire a lawyer. Um, I'm just kidding, but I think it's worth strongly considering hiring a law firm if you have the means to do so, just because there are a lot of benefits that come with it. And I'll sort of dive into what those benefits are in this section of the video, but want to emphasize that you do not need a lawyer to go through the process, but it does make the process significantly easier and in many cases allows you to go through the process um, a lot quicker than if you were sort of to do this manually on your own. Lawyers, especially law firms that specialize on immigration cases, have built their connections with the relevant governmental agencies that have to manage your paperwork to move you along the process, that they're able to sort of push people to push your case forward um, then if you were just to do this the traditional route of going to like a government office and giving them all of this paperwork. If you decide to go through this process entirely on your own and you do not live in the Dominican Republic, you're going to have to go through your consulate and embassy in your country of residence, which for those of you that are familiar with any bureaucratic institution or any bureaucratic office, you know that it is not easy to go through the government to handle these sorts of cases, um, especially if you are from, especially if you're engaging with sort of the Dominican bureaucratic system. Just to give you an example, currently, as of what's today, December 13th, 2021, if you sign on to the Dominican Embassy, if you go on the Googler and you go to the Dominican Embassy in Washington, D.C., it makes no mention, absolutely no mention of getting citizenship through the right of your parents on the website, even though there's a section labeled citizenship. Another example, if you click on citizenship in the Dominican consulate in New York, it gives you the process to file for a passport and says nothing about getting Dominican citizenship. Um, so needless to say that you could, down, you could go down the route of 
you know, starting this process and going through this process through your corresponding embassy slash consulate, but are you going to make it very far? And my sincere answer is that no, you are not going to be making it very far. And if you do, it's going to take you a very long time to get you to where you need to go. With all that being said, what is the actual process? What does the process actually look like? So let's go ahead and dive into phase one, which is undergoing transcription. Once you've gathered all of your materials, you're going to have to give your materials to someone. So if you're doing this entirely on your own, you're going to have to go and give it to the consulate or the embassy. If you're going to a law firm, you're going to have to give this to the lawyer you're working with. If you are living in the Dominican Republic, you're going to have to give these documents to El Ministerio de Interior. So um, that's basically the internal ministry, which is basically the office that handles all naturalization cases. So again, depending on how you want to move forward, depending on who you, what route you want to go through, you're going to have to give all of these documents to the appropriate stakeholders. And this first phase is called the transcription phase. So during transcription, they are going to essentially validate your parents' nationality and issue you a unique identification number. At the end of this stage, you will get a certificate of naturalization. For people who are interested in getting Dominican citizenship just for the sake of having it or for bookkeeping, this stage might be enough for some folks since at this point your citizenship is confirmed and it's set to go. But the majority of folks won't stop here because this document isn't really recognized by any Dominican entity outside of the government. Um, so for example, you're not gonna be getting a job with a certificate of naturalization. You're not gonna be opening a bank account with that. Um, so you're gonna have to move a bit further down the process. Um, but for some people, this might be enough. So this is where your, your process ends. Before jumping into phase two of the process, it's worth mentioning that the process of transcription during this first phase is the longest phase since the ball is pretty much out of your court since you've already given all of your documents you essentially just have to wait for the dominican government to get to your case and approve your citizenship status so on average this process takes about three months though if you go to the ministerio del interior's website it says it could take up to six months which sounds scary but Again, for me, I went through a law firm and the process took about two to two and a half months. Um, again, that's the benefit of working with a law firm. Um, but if you're not working through a law firm, just know that this first phase can take anywhere between three to six months total. Once you get your naturalization certificate, you are going to have to take it to the Junta Central Electoral, which again, serves as the national registry for you to register yourself um as a dominican national since nationalization does not equal to registration the way i like to think about it is if you were born in the woods of california <laughs> you are technically a u.s citizen but until you get a social security number you really can't do much in the u.s right you can't get a job you can't open a bank account um you you can't go to school right so you need to get registered after you get your naturalization certificate. Back when I was going through this process, you had to go to the Junta Central in person. And it had to be the Junta that corresponds to where the relative who is granting your citizenship is registered. So for example, in my case, I was going through my mom. My mom was registered in San Francisco de Macorís. San Francisco de Macorís, meaning when it came time for me to register, I had to travel to Santo Domingo um, from the US, spend about a week here, and then travel from Santo Domingo to San Francisco de Macorís to go to the Junta to get registered. I've heard from a grapevine, and I've heard like through some quick Google searches, that this is no longer the case, and you can get this done in any Junta Central. But the important thing is that you will need to travel to the Dominican Republic at some point, and this is where you would you would travel to essentially give your naturalization certificate and in exchange get your birth certificate once you get there again you have to turn in your naturalization certificate you're not going to get to keep it and in exchange for it they are going to give you a birth certificate since it is going to be your first time getting a birth certificate it is going to take a couple of days since they will have to verify all of the information and link your number your case number 
to your family's file. At the end of the stage, at the end of the day, when you get, turn in your naturalization certificate and they said, perfect, we are now going to issue you a birth certificate. You will again have to pay mil pesos to pick up your birth certificate. When you pay, they will give you a pink receipt to confirm that you've already paid for your birth certificate and on that receipt, it will tell you when your birth certificate is ready. For most Dominicans, the birth certificate will be ready the day of, but because this is your first time getting it, your first time, the first time it's being issued and there has to be some validation, it's gonna take a couple of days. Um, again, if your goal to become a Dominican citizen is to show a connection to your parents either because of inheritance or because they hold investments out here on the island, this stage of the process might be where you stop. But if you're looking for more, then you may want to move to the next stage. If it wasn't enough to get your Dominican birth certificate, either because you're looking for more, um, the next big document you're going to need is what's called the Dominican Cédula. So once you get your Dominican birth certificate, you pretty much are in the clear to get your Dominican Cédula, which serves as a key document to prove citizenship within the Dominican Republic and when operating in a Dominican context abroad. So if you're going to the embassy, if you're voting from abroad, you're gonna have to present a cédula. So all you all you you will really need is to go to your consulate or go to the Junta Central if you are in the DR and tell them that you are applying to get your first cédula. They will ask you for your birth certificate and they will ask you to fill out some forms with some information. Again, cédulas are or cédulas are completely free. There is no cost. The issue at this stage, however, is that because it is your first time getting a cédula and it is such an important document here in the Dominican Republic, there is a lot of review that goes into your application and there is a soft background check, a soft background check done on you to make sure that everything is in the clear. Again, after you submit your document, there's not much that you can do aside from waiting to hear back. Um, but for me, this stage took about another month to, for me to get my cellular. For I would suggest, this is just a general tip when working with Dominican bureaucracy, to check up on your case at the corresponding office every week or so, um, just to make sure that things are moving along. I would say if you try to skimp on this or if you deprioritize this, your case might be sort of skipped or deprioritized. Um, I would say generally, the more consistent you are, the more likely you are for things to, to speed up. Once you have a Dominican cedula, you pretty much are a Dominican citizen within the Dominican Republic. There's nothing that you cannot do with a Dominican cedula. Um, but with that being said, if you want sort of the recognition of your Dominican citizenship in an international context, the next phase is the phase to get your Dominican passport. This process is relatively quick and can be done in your local consulate or embassy. Or again, if you're in the Dominican Republic and you're living out here already, it can be done in uh, your nearest passport office, which there are designated offices to get passports. If you're filing from abroad, however, it's worth mentioning that this process will take a bit longer, about a month, and the process will be a bit more expensive than if you were living in the country. All in all, the process to get your Dominican passport is a process of getting any passport, including the one in your home country. You have to submit forms, you have to give them your cellula, you have to take pictures, submit pictures, the whole nine yards. But after you finish this phase, you will have officially gotten your Dominican passport and will be 100% Dominican across all possibilities and across all considerations. Congratulations. You are 100% Dominican in the DR, outside of the DR, under Dominican law, you know, in your home country, you have officially become a Dominican citizen. Ooh, ciao. This has been a very, very, very long video um, and I'm super tired, but I'm just gonna close this video saying that if you have any questions, if you have any questions, I am here for you. This is a long process and it is a difficult process. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, again, please be sure to like this video and please be sure to subscribe. It's gonna help other people who are considering, who are going through this process, actually begin and take the steps to start the process. Um, and yeah, I hope it, it, it's meaningful. Just to speak a little bit about me. Yeah. Um, I started this process back in July of 2017. I was in college at, at, at the time and I think my motive for getting it 
wasn't rooted in anything in particular. It was rooted more so in just like a general interest and, you know, tying myself back to the country um, through my parents. But, you know, fast forward five, six years, I'm currently living and working in the Dominican Republic. So I wouldn't be able to do that had I not gotten citizenship back when I was in college. Um, so I always say like, even if you don't think you're going to need it, it's still, it's still worth just getting it. The fact that you can get citizenship relatively quickly and relatively easily, just because you're the son, son or daughter of somebody who is Dominican, um, I think it's a privilege and one that shouldn't sort of be taken lightly and shouldn't be sort of completely disregarded. Um, so if you have the privilege and ability to do so, like, just do it. You never know where you, where you might end up and it's super important to get it done. But with all that being said, I'll wrap up this video here. We're currently at 10 subscribers, which is crazy to believe. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all in next week's video. Thank you so much. Bye.